my name's John Rubin, and um, my Creative Capital project is to produce a sitcom mm -hmm. that shot both in Los Angeles and Tehran about a family that exists as if in parallel realities in both cities at the same time. So uh, I'm in the research and development phase on the project, and I'm going to show a couple of related previous works and then sort of circle back to the sitcom. So much of my work starts from looking at the various ways individuals and groups construct and perform their social identities, and then moves towards using all of these factors as the material in the projects themselves. So I was invited to represent the city of Pittsburgh in the last Shanghai Biennial, and for the exhibition, I purchased the entire estate sale of a working class Pittsburgh family <laughs> and shipped it to Shanghai, and then restaged and held the actual sale during the full run of the exhibition. What's important to note is that over half of the objects in the estate were originally manufactured in China for American <laughs> consumers. So each day, visitors purchase possessions from the estate and then took them home, thus repatriating the objects into a market they were never intended for. The project complicated, this <laughs> the, project complicated the space between the familiar and the foreign by colliding the consumer residue of an American family's life with the new psychology of state capitalism in China. Another project, Conflict Kitchen, started in 2010 and has been operating seven days a week ever since. Conflict Kitchen is a public artwork I co-direct with Don Waleski in the form of a restaurant that only serves food from countries the United States is in conflict with. The restaurant rotates identities every few months in relationship to current geopolitical events with each iteration augmented by publications, performances, and discussions. The goal is to create a space on the street in daily life that catalyzes political and cultural discussions that are often uncomfortable for Americans to have, mostly because they involve challenging the polarizing narratives that are constructed by much of the media and US policymakers. One of the various performances we've done is a live Skype meal between Pittsburgh and Tehran, where dinner tables in each city were placed against a projection screen, broadcasting a live feed from the other city. Essentially, we're constructing a collapsed space where the same Persian recipes become the starting point for a conversation on politics. Two years ago, before the recent opening in diplomatic relations with Cuba, we asked Cubans to write part of a speech they would like Barack Obama to deliver. We then worked with the number one Barack Obama impersonator, at least he claims, to deliver a compilation of these speeches for a video for social media. The video shifts power dynamics by using an American president as a broadcast device for the Cuban people. This project, a separate project called The Foreigner, was developed with Felipe Casablanco, and it's been performed in several cities. In each instance, it involves local citizens acting as human proxies or avatars for Iranians living in Iran. Each avatar is connected live to an Iranian citizen who speaks directly through them. This is one version of the project that took place in a mall and public library in Cleveland. On the right are folks from Iran, and on the left are their proxies through which they engage the public. Here's another version that played out during our Palestinian focus in Conflict Kitchen, where Tracy on the left functioned as an avatar for Muhammad, who's living in the West Bank. The idea is to present to the public someone who is foreign and unfamiliar through the body of someone who is local and familiar. By confusing geography, age, gender, and ethnicity, the project attempts to challenge any singular reading of identity, as well as our notions of the place where the self and the other might reside. OK, so now talking about the Conflict Kitchen, I mean, excuse me, the uh, Creative Capital Project, the current project I'm working on grew out of uh, conversations I was having with Sir Rob Kashani, who runs Sazmanab Art Space in Tehran, about how he and everyone he knew growing up watched the same American sitcoms and TV shows I grew up, except they were viewing them through illegal satellite dishes or proxy servers. Uh, we started to talk about how Iranian state TV has been doing these unironic knockoffs of popular American TV shows for a while. <laughs> This is true. Here's a loose ripoff of Friends where the sets are kind of similar-ish and there's a few characters that are a bit similar, but the plot lines are basically different. Recently, State TV actually started producing almost a direct knockoff of Modern Family, where the same characters, plot lines, even some of the same shots, except they've made some tragic modifications, such as <laughs> the gay family is now straight. So given the distorted images most Americans and Iranians get about each other from our national media, we started to think, why the hell don't we just make our own sitcom? We can start by accelerating what Iranian state TV is already doing, but this time in both directions. 
The sitcom could function as this third space, a place where miscommunication and distortion can be embraced and turned into a new collaborative narrative. So here are the basics. We will be creating a pilot for a sitcom that revolves around one family that just so happens to exist simultaneously in LA and Tehran at the same time. Each character in the family will be produced by a vast array of local actors from both cities. In the finished episode, the action will move constantly back and forth through tight continuity between the American and Iranian versions of this family so that plot lines that are developed in one world get irrationally carried forward into the next. The idea here is to collapse two specific cultural and political conditions into a frenzied narrative space that is both familiar and destabilizing to each. As in past works, I'm interested in using this vernacular form that allows for play and improvisation as essentially a device for staging true stories. With many actors performing the same characters, there'll be multiple versions of this one pilot episode that will be presented as a multi-channel video installation as well as distributed as a series of small vignettes on social media where it can gain a much wider audience, particularly in Iran. Thank you. I think I'm good. Oh my God. I'm just going to chill for a little bit. <laughs> okay, not too long. Um, so I've recently come back from a research trip to Iran uh, where we met with potential writers, scouted locations, and got a clearer idea of the challenges and possibilities of production um, in Iran. We've already been working in LA. I'm working with Machine Project in LA as a co-producer and Saz Manab, a Center for Contemporary Art in Iran. Uh, we're currently looking for venues nationally and internationally to, um, to host the final installation and money for the US production and more specifically, funding that has the flexibility to be used in Iran. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>